Hey there, good Saturday morning to you. Welcome into Week in Recharge. I'm Felicia Cole. And I'm meteorologist Molly McCollum. In for Paul Goodlow this morning, Americans, America's weekend depends on the weather. And this weekend, you're gonna wanna pay close attention to where those summer storms, Felicia, they're popping up again. Yeah, they are. You don't wanna get caught off guard. That's the worst, right? So wanna get straight to your Saturday snapshot. Take a look at today's forecast. Have this complex of storms diving south across the Red River Valley of Texas. Pretty cool little complex going on there, but other areas We'll have to watch later on in the day for that possibility for some severe storms. And Felicia, it's many of the same areas that have been waterlogged over the past couple days. So severe storms possible for Arkansas as well as down into Mississippi where you've seen more than enough rain. And if the rain wasn't enough, we still have to talk about the heat too. Yeah, that's right. Where we could use a little bit of rain, we've got the dangerous heat instead. We're going to break all of that down for you. But first, want to talk about these thunderstorms. are rumbling across the eastern half. It's certainly already out there. The risk for those showers and storms going to pick up as we head into the later part of the day though. So let's time it out for you there in tally. You'll notice as we head into your lunch hour, we're starting to see that first pocket of unsettled weather moving in, crossing that I-10 corridor. Some of those again could have some gusty winds with them. And then watch what happens as we head into five o'clock. We're really gonna see a lot of the focus of this uh, as you look farther east, Lake City getting in on that, that 75 corridor. But Tallahassee, I think it's really gonna become more sporadic for you as we head into the evening. So if you are trying to make uh, dinner plans there in Tallahassee, you might be okay. I'd say just keep an eye on the uh, sky. Apalachicola, though, rounds of rain and storms in the forecast for you. Let's head up to Columbia, South Carolina now, where here's lunchtime. You're trying to get out and do some brunch for your Saturday, whatever you might be doing, getting the yard work in. Get out there early because the later part of the day in Columbia, it's like we flipped that switch. And you've got the storms bubbling up as we get that daytime heating going. Lake City back into Columbia, down into Hampton. We've got those scattered storms kind of bubbling up. Some of those are going to have some heavy rain, some gusty winds, maybe even a little bit of hail with them. Seven o'clock in Columbia, not a good time to uh, plan a dinner on the patio there. You want to you want to stay off the patios for your dinner later on there for your Saturday in Columbia. Let's head to Raleigh now where you guys are going to have some sporadic showers around Fayetteville and Newburn early on, but watch what happens. These are really, really scattered in nature. The Outer Banks, you're going to have some showers moving through, so while you do have that chance for some storms in Raleigh, it looks like the bigger focus here is going to be closer to the coast near Wilmington, and of course Molly, it is the time of year when people are trying to get out there. They're trying to enjoy things like, say, uh, some fishing. Yes, and driving along, you're jamming, right? You're singing along to your song, and the road explodes. Uh, that was going to be a hard pass for me, but uh, something to watch out for, certainly with all this heat that we've been having. Something to watch out for as well is the dangerous heat. We've got heat alerts in place across much of the desert southwest, stretching into even portions of western Texas here. Heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, excessive heat watches, and a lot of these, some of these are going into effect next week and then lasting through the entire week. What is going on? Well, this is what's going on. It's high pressure. Under that high pressure, you get the sinking air. As that air sinks, it compresses and it heats and that dome of heat is in control of our weather west of that Mississippi Valley. Temperatures well above average in places like Vegas and Tucson. Places like even um, Amarillo, you guys are going to be much hotter than you would expect. Dozens of records possible as we head through the next week. Broken records, tied records, that's what we're looking at. For today, the forecast in Tucson is 110, the old record 109. That would break that record set back in 1995 in Alamosa, Colorado. 89 is the forecast. And this is as you get up in elevation. So upper 80s might not sound like that hot, but when you're talking about going up in elevation, it's getting pretty hot. So in Phoenix, the average first day of above 110 degrees is June 18th. The forecast is to get above that today. So we're a little bit ahead on that. Molly? Oh, eat to see that. And, you know, I'm sure the people that were out there target shooting had no thought that that could spark the fire. But you really got to be careful with what you're doing when we're talking about such dry conditions and such uh, heat as well. We've got heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, excessive heat watches for portions of the country that are already very hot. Uh, a place like L.A., the L.A. County Mountains, that's going into effect as we head through next week. So if you are planning some outings, if you're trying to get out and about, you're going to want to plan around this heat for sure. This is what's going on. We've got this ridge or this dome of high pressure that is just absolutely dominating our weather for the western portions of the country. And that is leaving temperatures well above average from the northern plains all the way through the southern plains, back through the desert southwest and to the west coast as well. We're talking about temperatures that would already be in the triple digits in some places like Phoenix, even hotter than that. We could see several dozens, in fact, of records broken as we head through next week, all those red dots representing the possibility of those broken records. So for today, we've got that forecast 
pass of 110 in Tucson. That would break the old record of 109 set back in 1995. The forecast in El Paso, 107 degrees today, guys. That would break that record of 106 set back in 2013. So it's a hot one out there, Molly. Well, come so peaceful and, and nice. Water. You just want to get out in the water. Yes, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Half past the hours, we can ro recharge. Rolls on. I'm Felicia Cole. And I'm Molly McCullum in for Paul Goodloe. This morning, thunderstorms moving across the south, once again bringing the threat for flooding. Let's take a live player. And a lot of the storms that we saw even last season, that rapid intensification can be a game changer. Now, that's not just a term that we throw out there all willy-nilly. You actually have to meet certain criteria for it to be considered rapid intensification. You've got to see at least a 35 mile per hour wind, wind increase in 24 hours. This is really difficult to forecast because rapid intensification isn't something that models historically or really a factor into the forecasting. One in three storms though do undergo rapid intensification and that's mostly with category four or five storms undergoing that rapid intensification and becoming even stronger, which is the last thing that you want. We usually see this in September that's the peak of hurricane season and typically in the Gulf of Mexico where we have very, very warm water, the Caribbean Sea or the off the southeast coast where we've just got pockets of abundantly warm water. You see that here, rapid intensification frequency, especially across the Gulf of Mexico. That's particularly dangerous because you'll notice there's so many areas of land and highly populated areas right around the Gulf of Mexico. So rapid intensification, a huge issue when it comes to forecasting the tropics. Well, do you got a weather science question? Question. So connected the weather and whether you should wash your car or not, right? This is a song that gets stuck in your head, right? Uh, well, uh, we get uh, I don't know. This wouldn't be one stuck in my really? head for me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in Burlington, sunshine and 80s. Oh, Detroit, not so Not good, so though. much in Detroit. If you're in New York, probably a good day. Maybe even a little bit on the cooler side to yeah. wash your car. Charleston, though, don't do it today. Plenty of rain coming towards your area and some thunderstorms, too. Always cool. Beautiful in Colorado Springs. Oh. Does it get better? Birdie, birdie or bogey? Looking like a birdie for One of my there. favorite places. As we go to Chicago, eh, it looks more like a bogey because we've got some afternoon thunderstorms moving in. So watch out, especially out on the golf course. Yeah, later part of your afternoon there in Chicago for the game, the baseball game that's going to kick off. Should be okay. Today in Philly at 4 o'clock, perfect baseball weather. Does it get better than that? No, it really doesn't. And as we move into Cleveland, also, I mean, look at this. This is amazing. Two 70s for baseball weather. Doesn't Absolutely. get better. Perfect. <laughs> Let's take a look at your seven day stretch because we've got some messy weather sticking around across portions of the southeast today. LA, the lower 80s and plenty of sunshine. Enjoy that because it's going to be heating up by Sunday. We're still in the lower 80s there, upper 80s in Chicago, above average. We see this storm system pushing farther eastward, eventually filling in through the east coast. By Monday, we are really hot in Dallas and Denver. We're talking about upper 90s, well above average. Seattle, though, still staying cool. You'll have that rain moving in as we head into Tuesday. Tuesday, mid 60s there with those showers. But look at this heat that's spreading across the plains. We're talking about the upper 70s in Chicago. Beautiful mid part of the week there for you in the Windy City. By Wednesday, still looking beautiful. Mostly dry for a lot of the country. As we head into Thursday, Miami, you do have that chance for scattered storms. But you'll notice where we are continuing with this heat across the middle part of the country. And as we head into next weekend, you see it here. We've really introduced that possibility for a few storms around the Great Lakes region there in Chicago, maybe a few morning showers to kick off your Saturday.